Hello, hello, six standard CBC children. Today we are going to continue the lesson chapter nine, the living organisms in that habitat. We have already started the lesson and this continuing and uh, video number twelve. Right now, this <coughs> habitat, living organisms. In that habitat portion, we are going to learn side topic habitat. What is a habitat? It is a place where living organisms live. Habitat is a place where living organisms live. What does it mean? We are living in a house, is it not? And fish live in water, and uh, higher animals like lion, tiger, leopard. They are all living in forest, is it not? Like that, organisms, plants and animals, where they live, it is called habitat. So yeah. Now this habitat, already I have just given a introduction as a habitat, is it not? In that we have, it is as aquatic habitat and terrestrial habitat. Aquatic habitat one day. And as it is as freshwater habitat and marine water habitat. Marine water habitat one day, seas and ocean. Whereas freshwater one day, river, pond, pool and lakes. They are all freshwater habitat. And under freshwater habitat, again we have it as Lentic habitat and lotic habitat. What does it mean? Lentic na running water. River la running water habitat. Whereas lotic habitat and the standing water, stagnant water, pond, pool, lake, and the tani away, tangi from water, no chitu chipum. That is airy lunch alone. They are all standing water habitat. And under that, we have learned that we will re revise also the adaptations of animals living in freshwater and marine water habitat. Okay. And then, the first part of the lesson, we have learned that fish adapted itself to live in aquatic habitat by the presence of Fins as locomotory organ and then gills respiratory organ. The body is streamlined. The boat shape of the body is streamlined so that it can move in water in any direction. Other than fish shape. Whereas camel, it lives in a desert. So it is having a long leg so that the heat from the Sandy soil, very hot soil, will not imbibe into the body. So it is having a long leg. So adaptations of camel we have studied. Yeah. So Adhemati, now we are going to learn terrestrial habitat. And terrestrial habitat, we have three kinds. One is desert habitat, second one, mountain region, third one, grassland. Habitat. I repeat, desert habitat, mountain habit, sorry, mountain region, and grassland habitat. I hope you follow this. Huh? So now in uh, camel, in the particular camel, on the number page 80, camel, or no, sir, camel on the page 80. The sea and the desert, page 80, in sea, plants and animals are surrounded by saline water. Saline water na salty water. Whereas, there is little water available in the desert. So, the, day, the sea and the desert, they are extremely different surroundings. Then, camel, it is the body structure of a camel helps it to survive in a 
desert condition. In what way camels have long legs which help to keep their body away from heat of the sand. Camels have long legs. The pada comes in the Pona video comes in the camels will have long legs which keep their body away from the heat of the sand. And they also excrete small amount of urine. In the rumba tanne kudikar. So they excrete small amount of urine. Their dung is dry. Chana kudunga other waste. Their dung is dry and they do not sweat. Since camels lose very little water from their bodies, they can live for many days without water. That is the characteristics or otherwise we say adaptations of camel to live in a desert condition. So yeah, now this desert, it will be having very hot climate during summer and during daytime and very cold during night time, right? And at the same time, other than the camels, there are other animals, they are also living in a desert region. Atta namadhi po kakti. Page 83 at go, page 83, we discussed abiotic factors of desert and the adaptations in camel. Abiotic factor in the Wind, water, air, temperature, na, abiotic factors. It is the temperature or adapted. Temperature, how it withstand, how the animals are adapted, or the adapted, abiotic factor. What about other animals and plants? They are found in the desert. They too have some adaptations. And uh, there are desert animals like rat and snakes which do not have long legs as that of the camel. Okay, how, do, how are they adapted? As to stay away from the intense heat. Intense heat na? Rumb uh, hotter. To stay away from the intense heat during the day, they stay in the burrows deep in the sand. Okay, so, to stay away from the intense heat during the day, they stay in burrows deep in the sand. And these animals come out only during the night when it is colder. So these animals normally they don't have long legs. So to get away from the heat, they stay in burrows. Where are the burrows? They are in the deep soil, deep sand, soil chanamata, sand chanamata, deep sand, so yeah, and these animals come out only during the night when it is colder. I hope you are following this. It is the desert animals like rat and snakes. Then, animal plants also, there are some plants living in the desert region and they are normally as cactus plant. Now this cactus plant in deserts, this cactus plant they have reduced leaves and these leaves are reduced to spines. In cactus plant leaves are reduced to spine. Why so? Normally, leaves will have long, sorry, flat leaf lamina in a plants living in normal temperature. So, for that, they can utilize their flat portion. But if it is present in a desert condition, this plant lamina, it will absorb more water and that water will be evaporated. Then it is of no use. So, it is Nature's adaptation that in cactus plant the leaves are much reduced or we say it is absent or it is reduced into spines. Then how is photosynthesis taking place? It is taking place by the stem. For example, 
This is a cactus plant as Opuntia. The plant name is called Opuntia. Hmm? Here the leaves are reduced to spine like this. Cactus plant leaves are reduced to spine. Okay. Now when they flatten the stem in Opuntia doing the function of photosynthesis it is called Cladode. So when they flatten the stem doing the function of photosynthesis, it is known as cladode. Okay, and then it is also known as filoclad. It is also known as filoclad. So I say when they flatten the stem. Doing the function of photosynthesis, it is called filoclad, filona leaf. So the flattened stem of the leaf mari. So the flattened stem doing the function of photosynthesis, it is called filoclad. Right? Same way when the cylindrical stem in some plant leaves are much reduced, like a Cylindrical stem. In the morning, kuch kuch These are called cladode. When the cylindrical stem doing the function of photosynthesis, that is called cladode. I hope you understand. Other hmm? illustrative activity three part. Bring a pointed cactus and a leafy plant to the classroom. In the classroom, let's see activity one more. The polythene bag is some parts of the two plants. Tie the polythene bag in some parts of the two plants and uh, huh? so we, we know transpiration. Yeah, what is it? Evaporation of excess water in the form of water vapor that is called transpiration. Functions of leaf also. Yeah. So are they married? Rendered plant, one on the potted plant with the normal leaf, another one cactus plant. See, now leave the potted plant in the sun and observe for few days. What will you say? Few hours. The normal uh, plant with the normal leaf that will transpire and more water droplets will be seen on the transparent bag, the polythene bag. Whereas very little water will droplets will be seen in the cactus plant. This shows that uh, desert plant lose very little water. I hope you could follow this. Huh? This is activity number three. Chariya? So here we understand the process transpiration. What are the definition? Evaporation of excess water by the green leaf in the form of water vapor is called transpiration. Chariya. Then desert plants lose very little water through transpiration. The leaves in desert plants are either absent, very small or they are in the form of spines. This helps in reducing loss of water from the leaves through transpiration. The leaf-like structure that you see in the cactus, the figure 9.5 per, they are the stem actually. The molecular, the molecular per. They are actually the stem. Okay. So photosynthesis in these plants is usually carried out by the stem. So again, I say when they flatten the stem. During the function of leaf, it is called filoclad. Filomena leaf. Cladna and the leaf marikarnala, it is called filoclad. When the cylindrical stem, we flat a lama, we kuchikuchia stem on the cylindrical hold of the other period, clad hold. So the stem is also covered with thick waxy layer which helps to retain water in the tissues of cacti. 
I hope you are following this. Huh? So the stem is also covered with the thick waxy layer which helps to retain water in the tissues of cacti. Right? So most desert plants have roots that go very deep into the soil for absorbing water. So here the desert plants will have well developed taproot system which grow deep into the soil so that it can absorb water from the uh, bottom portion of the soil. So, yeah. so that is the adaptation. Enola, a well developed root system which goes deep into the soil and then the leaves are much reduced and uh, to avoid transpiration, transpiration is the process of evaporation of excess water from the leaf in the form of water vapor, right? And the leaves are much reduced to spine and when the stem, as the result, the stem is doing the function of photosynthesis. When the stem is doing, when the flattened stem doing the function of photosynthesis, it is called philoclad. When cylindrical stem doing the function of photosynthesis, it is known as cladodon. So, in the philodon, philocladon, cladodon, the uh, definition is like, I have to this is for the adaptations of desert plants. Okay. And adaptations of animals in a chuliko, camel, it has long leg. Whereas rat and rat and snake, it lives, they live in burrows during daytime deep inside the soil and come out when come out at night when it is colder. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is for adaptations of desert region. Right? The next one, mountain region. These habitats, further go through panel, for no sure. Next, mountain region. These habitats are normally very cold and windy. In some areas, snowfall may take place in winters. There is a large variety of plants and animals living in the mountain region. There is a large variety of plants and animals living in the mountain regions. Then, you would have seen trees in the mountain habitat. They are cone-shaped leaves. These are all cone-shaped leaves. So, yeah. Where, if you live in a mountain region or visited, you may have seen a large number of trees which are cone-shaped. And these trees, they are adapted to the conditions of cold climate. These trees are normally cone shaped and have sloping branches. When the cone shape na mountain and the cone shape na in the mountain. So it is a leaf. It is a leaf. It is a sloping. This portion is sloping. This is the slope. So yeah. So here Mountain region, trees in the mountain regions are normally cone shaped and have sloping branches. The leaves of these trees are needle like and it helps the rain water and snow to slide off easily. Actually, pine tree is only normal. What is that? Tiger cave lamp back on the island and the full chowk to the other cone shaped leaves branches. It is having a cone shaped tree with the sloping branches. So, yeah. 
So, uh, trees present in the mountain regions are normally cone shaped and have sloping branches. The leaves of some of these are needle like and it helps the rain water and snow to fall off easily, to slide off easily. And that could be trees with shapes very different from these that are also present on mountain. And then other than that, there are trees with the different shape that are present on the mountain. They may have different kind of adaptation to survive on the mountain habitat. So, yeah, the animals living in the mountain regions are also adapted to the conditions. Enala, they have thick skin or fur to protect them from cold. These animals have thick skin or fur to protect them from cold. Example, York. Example, York have long hair to keep them warm. B palam paru. B vandhi York. A vandhi snow leopard. And C vandhi mountain goat. In the padalang ketu comment kudukku chillumai. Edila creative questions. Right? Animals having adaptations in the mountain. They are adapted to the mountain region condition. They have thick skin. Arandhi yak or fur to protect them from cold. Fur and the snow leopard. Fur na jabdi na chalta the. The chara chara ya skin na kholya al per. And then for example, yak have long hair to keep them warm, and the snow leopard has thick fur on its body. Snow leopard yak. Snow leopard. <coughs> Snow leopard, yak, and mountain goat. And mountain goat. These are the animals in the mountain regions. And snow leopard has thick fur on its body and uh, on its body, including its feet and toes. Even the kai kaal naha illa claim the kaal naal limbs layo is covered with the fur. Sorry. And it protects its feet from the cold when it walks on the snow. Another snow leopard, it protects its feet from the cold when it walks on the snow. Sorry. So the mountain goat has strong hooves for running up the rocky slopes. I repeat, the mountain goat has strong hooves for running up the rocky slopes on the mountains. Hmm? As we go up in the mountainous area, the surroundings change and we see different kinds of adaptations at different heights. I hope you are able to follow this. Huh? So here, grassland, for the plant, it is having cone shaped structure with the sloping branches. Right? And then it avoids, then it is covered with the uh, snow. The trees are normally cone shaped, having sloping branches. The leaves of them are needle like. And this helps the rainwater and snow to slide off easily. Example, I am Tiger cave, Mahabalipuram Pura Vajayala, Tiger cave le, adu full of chauku thotam. Ile, anamagarna, nalla snow mountain le, irkum. Right? Then animals vande, enala example, snow leopard, yak and mountain goat. I hope you understand. Hmm? The next one is grassland. <coughs> next one the grassland. Grassland. A lion lives in a forest or grassland and is a strong animal that can hunt and kills animals like deer. Repeat, a lion lives in a forest or a grassland and is a strong animal 
that can hunt and kill animals like deer. And it's a light brown, it is light brown in color. And look at the picture here. It is light brown in color. How are the eyes placed in the face for these two animals? Every on the in front or on the side of the face. Lion can get the body. Now, lions have long claws in their front legs that can be withdrawn inside the toes. Adaptation for it. Another, lions have long claws in their front leg that can be withdrawn inside the toes. Right? Do the features of a lion help it in any way to survive? Yes, it's another reason. What are the features? Its light brown color helps it to hide in dry grassland when it hunts for prey. I repeat, its light brown color helps it to hide in dry grassland when it hunts for its prey. Bring another animals to eat. The eyes in the front of the face allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey. I repeat, the eyes in front of the face allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey. I hope you understand. Hmm? So I repeat, do the features of a lion Help it anyway to survive. I mean, uh, yes, sir. its light brown color helps it to hide in dry grassland when it hunts for its prey. And the eyes in front of the face allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey. I hope you understand. Hmm? And then, a deer. Deer is another animal that lives in. Forest and grassland. Ademari, it has a strong teeth for chewing hard plant stem. Do you have? It has strong teeth for chewing hard plant stems of the forest. A deer needs to know about the presence of predators. Predators na animals like lion that make it their prey. So avala predators. So I say, uh, deer has strong teeth for chewing hot plants stem of the forest. And it also needs to know about the presence of predators. Predators na in the animal are the pullumo and animal prepared predators. In order to run away from them and not to become their prey. So the predators when the tapichi wodatikaha they have the Adaptation. It has long ears to hear movements of the predators. Deer have long ears to know the movement of the predators. Then the eyes on the side of its head allow it to look in all directions for danger. The eyes on the side of its head allow it to look in all directions for danger. The speed of the Deer helps them to run away from the predators. I repeat, the speed of the deer helps them to run away from the predators. I hope you are following this. Yeah? Just a second, we go through one. Just a second. So, there are many other features of a lion, deer or other animals and plants that help them to survive in the habitat. We'll just continue. So, we are doing adaptations as desert, mountain, grassland. So, desert skin, what are the animals as? Desert skin, children, camel, hmm. desert skin, another animal, camel, go to Panabuka, rat, 
Camel, rat, then even burrow animals are there. Rat and snakes. Camel, rats and snake. Camels will have long legs. Rats and snakes, they live in burrows deep inside the sand during daytime. And they come out at night when it is cooler. Yeah, but look. Hmm? Whereas mountain animals, what are all? They are all snow leopard, yaw and mountain goat. Mountain Sunday, snow leopard, yaw and mountain goat. And for grassland, they are lion and deer. Lion Sunday, in adaptation, rise in front. Normal lions, it has light brown color. And it helps it to hide in dry grassland when it hunts for prey. The eyes in front of the face allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey. And deer is another animal which it has to go speed for. How sorry, speed is very important for the grassland animals because there is no place for the animals to hide because forest mari nariya peri peri tree la kadaiyadhu or bushy iru kadaiyadhu so grassland and it is somewhat uh, plainer so the uh, animals when the predators when they hunt the lower animals like deer then it needs to speed up its Run. So, this speed is very important for animals in grasslands. I hope you understand this. Hmm? So, a deer needs to know about the presence of predators and now in order to run away from them and not to become their prey. It has long ears to hear movements of predators. The eyes on its side allow the Allow it to look in all directions for the danger. And the speed of the deer helps them to run away from the predators. So there are many other features of lion and deer or animals and plants that help them to survive in their habitat. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is for the terrestrial habitat. Okay. Whereas in aquatic forms, aquatic habitat, my friend, introduction of the other, but this will be open, right? Aquatic as water, aquatic form the water form. They are fresh water, they are fresh water and marine water. Marine water in the sea and oceans. Okay. There is fresh water. They are running water and standing water. <coughs> running water and standing water. That kind of fine discussion. Standing water, the stagnant water. Stand, standing water, you know, they are the stagnant water. So, running water on the as uh, river, running water on the river, uh, stagnant water on the lake, pool, pond, all stagnant water. Then, see you now, we are going to go to the river, we are going to go to the river, we are going to go to the river. Sea water. Hmm? There is ocean, they are Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Alanamakashikola, they are. So, oceans, <coughs> we already discussed how fish are adapted to live in the sea pathology. Now, many other sea animals have streamlined bodies to help them. Move easily in water. Streamlined body na alormari boat shape. And there are some sea animals like squids and octopus 
which do not have this streamlined body. Squidder octopus. See it. Squidder octopus. Squidder octopus. They don't have streamlined body. Chhiya. Or no show. This aquatic. See it. They don't have. With an octopus, they don't have streamlined body. Streamlined in a boat shape. Which do not sell. They stay deeper in the ocean. And they stay deeper in the ocean near the seabed and catch any prey that move towards them. Seabed na, in the bottom of the sea chul, or the seabed. When they move in water, they make their body shape streamlined. And these animals have gills to help them to use oxygen dissolved in water. Actually, the squid no octopus no that have eight in my reproduction at once only for the in the octopus no squid no streamlined body career. But when they move in water, their body turns into streamlined. Sure, and they use gills for breathing. Now there are some sea animals like dolphin and whales which do not have gills. Dolphin and whales do not have gills. They breathe in air through the nostril or blue hole. Dolphin and the dolphin through blue hole. It is called blue hole. Okay. The nostril and the mouth to tolerate the So they breathe through blue hole. That are located on the upper part of their heads. This allows them to breathe in air when they swim near the surface of water. And they can stay inside the water for a long time without breathing. They come out of the surface from time to time to breathe in air. I hope you could follow this. For a dolphin, it will be tiny little 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 and the method. Are you clear? Next, the ponds and lakes. Plants are growing in ponds, lakes, river and even some drain. When you go for a field trip near the pond, you can observe different kinds of plants. Let me create a picture of the parade. Some aquatic plants float on water. Water high is in the perch upon the Icarnia, the Amala Shedi, the Tamra Varni Akila Narea Pilla, and the Icarnia. Patria. Then the leaves, stems, and roots they are adapted to live in water. So this is adaptations of aquatic plants. In water to live in. So some of these plants have their roots fixed in the soil below the water. And in terrestrial plant, roots normally play very important role in the absorption of nutrients and water from the soil. However, in aquatic plants, roots are much reduced in size, and their main function is to hold the plant only, to keep the buoyancy float in water by holding the plant. The stem of these plants are long, hollow and light. It is an adaptation. And the stems grow up to the surface of the water while the leaves and flowers float on the surface of water. For example, Paris area. <coughs> Valis media and the name of the plant. In the Valis media, it is the water and it is having a ribbon shaped leaves like this. The leaves are ribbon shaped. It is ribbon shaped leaves. Valis media, ribbon shaped leaves. And then it has flowers. It has a long, 
pedicel with the flower. It is the flower. Okay? And then it will be a round flower. I hope you understand. Hmm? So it is having a long leaf, a flattened a ribbon shaped leaf and long stem. So I repeat, the stem of these plants are long, hollow and light. The stems grow up to the surface of water while the leaves and flowers float on the surface of water. Some aquatic plants are submerged in water. All the parts of such plants are under water. Some of these have narrow and thin ribbon-like leaves. They bend in flowing water. In submerged plants, leaves are often highly divided, otherwise we say dissected, through which water can easily flow without damaging them. Frog usually in the plant stem. Then frog usually live in ponds. They can stay both inside the water and also move in plants. So they are called amphibious animal. They have strong back legs that help them to leap while catch, catching their prey. They have webbed feet which help them to swim in water. So aquatic animals learn the Normal, we say talk about the fish and frog, the sea and ocean, the squid, octopus. I hope you are able to follow this. Huh? So, this is for habitat that we are talking about as terrestrial and aquatic. In the picture example, our textbook example, picture video, with that we will still understand better. I hope you are following this. Huh? We will continue in the next session. Thank you.